Hey everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, first off, thanks for joining us here uh, at the webinar. Um, we're really excited to present to you Slay the Season, What Holiday Shoppers Want and How Retailers Plan to Deliver. Um, I'm Peter from Mass Shoppers. I'm the Director of Marketing um, and here today from Mass Shoppers in Bronzo, um, we have Jim Davidson and Chad Ledford. Uh, Jim is the head of research at Bronzo. Uh, he brings uh, with us today 15 years of experience in online marketing, uh, managing email and, and cross-channel pro programs. Um, he's regularly published in um, industry-focused uh, content for Bronzo in publications like Forbes, USA Today, and NPR's Marketplace. Um, and he also is an active speaker. Um, he speaks at events like IRCE, the Etail Events, Market Live, and Magento Imagine. Um, Chad Ledford is our CRO and also one of the co-founders co -founders of our company. Um, he's an entrepreneur with 15 years under his belt. Um, he gained his e-commerce experience by founding a niche online retail store, which was the fastest, uh, fourth fastest growing retail company in the U.S. before it was sold in 2014. Um, so that's a little bit about our presenters. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it and turn this over to Jim. Uh, he's going to present some research about what shoppers really want from holiday sales and how you, as a brand, can give them what they want and maximize their holiday revenue. Um, just as an aside, if you have any questions at any time, please use the, the Q&A or the chat box to enter your questions and we'll either answer in real time or we'll follow up at the end of the webinar. All right, go ahead and take it away, Jim. Excellent. Thank you so much for that introduction and thanks to all of you for joining us today. Lots of good data to share with you. Really looking forward to it. All right, so we are now in the holidays, which is very festive. I'm sure you're starting to see lots of imagery like this all around the office and everywhere that you go, but it may be leaving you feeling a little bit like this. It, it's amazing how early holiday fatigue can set in. But we are in it. It's our busiest time. It's where a lot of us are going to make a good amount of money. So I want to go through a few things today that are going to help you out throughout the season. The first thing I want to do is to talk about our shoppers. So, you know, first of all, we, when we think about our shoppers throughout the year, this is a little bit of the idea that we have. You know, they're very happy, they're making their purchase decisions, they're whipping out those credit cards ready to buy. And then during the holidays, maybe we ideally have this image of our holiday shopper. They get a little festive, they dress for winter and go out and keep filling up those bags. But that's not really what our holiday shopper is. So when we think of holiday shopping, a lot of us think of this, you know, these crazy lines lining up at three in the morning. Now, if you look over on the bottom right, I love the guy with the mask and his, uh, his girlfriend with the, the nice blank stare there, ready to go into Target. But for years, we've really been looking at this as our customer and trying to market to these consumers who are really getting out there and looking for the best deals. But there's been a lot of shifts. Now when we think about holiday shopping, this can be holiday shopping. Uh, you don't even have to get dressed. Not a lot of people are getting dressed up at 3 in the morning to go for those doorbusters. But really, the, the way that consumers are shopping has changed very significantly. And it can be a lot for us to keep up with. You know, we're about to go into this onslaught of tons of promotions and offers. It can be very overwhelming for our customers. It can be very challenging for us as marketers to understand what's going to resonate with them and what's going to keep them engaged in buying. And this can just be a little bit frustrating. And as the season progresses, some of your best laid plans can really go off the tracks. So what we wanted to do was to really understand what consumers want from the holidays. What are their expectations? How do they plan to shop? What kind of deals do they want? What's going to fall flat for them? And then to see, are retailers really prepared to meet those expectations? What, what do they have in store for the busiest time of the year? And this is really when people bring out their best. So as much as you're making your best plans, your competitors are too. So what we did is we, um, we did a survey where we actually asked 1,000 holiday shoppers and over 100 retailers um, what they're planning to do for the season. So we wanted to figure out what are these new ways of shopping and, and what are some of those really brilliant ideas that we're going to see during the season. So if you want to download the report, you can see it here, and I think you're going to receive it as a follow-up to this webinar. But I'm going to be sharing a lot of the data from it today to give you an idea of what is in there. So what I'm going to go through is, uh, first of all, we're going to talk about timing for the season. Then we're going to talk about actual promotions and, and what we're going to see in the inbox and on sites and in stores this year. And then, of course, 
any webinar would not be complete without talking about mobile. So we will be talking about um, some holiday strategies with mobile. Then I'm going to wrap everything up and turn it back over to the Ad Shoppers guys who have a lot of good information to share too. All right, so first of all, let's talk about timing is everything. Now to give you an idea about how this survey is set up, so you can give some, get some orientation for the charts that I'm about to show you, um, I wanted to give you this one example. So we asked consumers, when do you start your holiday shopping? And we asked retailers, when do you start your holiday marketing? So we wanted to get this point and counterpoint, this you know, back and forth between expectations and what's going to be in store. So we're going to have a lot of those questions that are aligned between the holiday shopper and the retailer. And for the most part, these colors are going to be consistent. So easy way for you to follow along. So the first chart I'm going to show you here is when do you start your holiday shopping or your marketing? Now notice it says when do you start. And so this is not showing you shopping activity, but when are those shoppers really going to start throwing their first dollars out? And this gives you an idea of when, you're, when to expect a few peaks throughout the season. So first of all, what we're seeing here is for marketers. Now this really makes sense. A lot of us start our holidays very early, and very few people are going to start their holiday marketing late in the season. Now when we over overlay holiday shoppers, we see it's not as predictable. It doesn't really trail off in a nice little pattern. We see a lot of spikes throughout the season. So 53% of retailers are starting their holiday marketing in September or earlier. So they've already started, over half of retailers. So you know, maybe you're on the line. If you haven't, you're part of that 47% who are about to get started. Um, and this really fuels this, this push, this first push of holiday spend from shoppers. So we see a good amount of folks really ramping it up from September to November before Thanksgiving and all those big days hit. But what's interesting too is we look over at this group and there are 27% of holiday shoppers who aren't even going to start their shopping until Black Friday or later. So this represents a lot of those folks who are waiting for the best deals or for the folks who are really going to be those last minute shoppers. So the really specific consumers that we can start to target into. So what I wanted to do was to dig a little bit deeper and figure out who are these folks and how can we really message to them during the season. So first let's take a look at gender, men versus women. And that, that age old cliche is true. Um, Females start early, men start late. So what we're seeing here is 24% of females will start their holiday shopping before September. So really those early bird shoppers. And it's a little too late to go after them because you know, we're almost in October now. Um, but what we see is that the, the pattern for the next period, and especially during some of those big shopping days, are pretty much in, in line. So what this means to me is if you're really looking to target that first purchase or to really anticipate when folks are going to gear up for their holiday shopping, when we look at gender, a lot of that's going to be in line, except for these outskirts of the season. So when you start to get to those last minute push, that's going to be the time where maybe some of those messages are going to resonate more with your male segments of your audience. So if we look at this by age, now there's, there's going to be a, a lot of data on this chart, so it's going to look like a bunch of tossed up spaghetti noodles. So I want to step through it for you. So uh, first of all, what we're looking at is this early shopping period. And what was interesting to me here is that shoppers 50 and over, which are represented by like that lavender and black line at the very top, they represent the largest group of shoppers who are starting before September. And you'll see why I'm calling that out on the front end in just a, a few minutes. Now we see this go down a little bit and start to peak back up through November. And most of these ages are, are pretty much following in line. You know, we see some different areas here. And what this can help you to do, especially as we start to go into October and November, is to really understand which of these groups can I start to target to. Or if I'm looking to promote a specific product to a certain audience, maybe it's a, a really trendy t-shirt to a younger group, or maybe it's a more traditional type holiday sweater uh, to a, a larger segment. This is going to help you to really capture some of those first purchase opportunities and speak to those customers more directly. Now, one thing that was interesting to me here is Thanksgiving Day, because this is one of those days during the holidays that still retains a little bit of um, moral play, because you know we're not open, we care about our employees, or of course we're open, get your best deals and start your Black Friday weekend uh, shopping early. So there's still a bit of this mixed message and a different emotion that folks can play on. But what's interesting to me is a lot of folks are not going to start their shopping. They're really waiting for that Black Friday. So we're not going to see a lot of that first spend on Thanksgiving, so it could really open you up to some different promotional play on that day, which I would definitely encourage. But as we move toward Black Friday, this is where I saw a really interesting trend, especially with 18 to 29 year olds. So that millennial group that everybody's trying to capture, they really are waiting to throw those dollars out until Black Friday, which to me was interesting too, because Black Friday we think of traditionally more as an in-store day, um, although that line is really starting to get blurred and it's not just one day, it's more that full weekend. But still, the, the amount of attention that Black Friday is getting from millennials is definitely worth looking out for. 
So as you start to look at how you're increasing the number of messages that you're sending and you're really amplifying those promotional messages in your stores or on your site, this can give you an idea of who to target and how to talk to them. Now Cyber Monday moving through till after Cyber Monday, what was really interesting to me here is when we look at after Cyber Monday, these last minute shoppers, now remember we saw men trail up when we looked at the gender comparison here, but what was worth noting was that uh, shoppers 50 and older um, are the, also the largest last minute shopper groups who are going to really start to do their, their first spend and try to catch up on all those deals they didn't see throughout the season. So they really candlestick this whole data of starting early and also starting late. Okay, so we looked a little bit at timing. Now let's look at promotions. And this is, this is one of the biggest challenges for retailers to figure out what's going to be that winning sale that we put out there in the market. So um, the way I'm going to show you this data is I'm going to, I first want to show you how consumers responded. So what did those holiday shoppers want to see? So these were the promotions that they found to be the most loved. And we looked at most loved and most hated, a bunch of fun things. But this is showing you the most loved promotions. So it's free purchase with gifts with over half of holiday shoppers loving that promotion. And then it steps down from there. Now when we look at marketers, there's a little difference here and, and some disconnects in what retailers found to be effective. So are these promotions, promotions actually effective? So we're balancing love from consumers and effectiveness from uh, retailers. So to, to give you a little bit of clarity on how these stack up, because there are a lot of numbers on the screen right now, the most popular with both retailers and holiday shoppers was free gift with purchase. The most divisive was a door buster. Now, nobody likes waking up early, but I also think that this really speaks to the, the awareness by the consumer that your limited inventory door buster at 3 a.m. is probably still going to be available a little bit later in the day. And it's also probably going to be available on your website or at least something comparable. And if it's not, it might be on your competitors. So I think this is showing a little bit of a redefinition of what a door buster means um, in the market. And there's some of the difference between the effectiveness of a consumer and, and the interest from, I mean, the effectiveness from a retailer and the interest from a consumer. And then the most hated and the least effective out of all of these was the limited inventory sale. Um, so one of the data points that, that we have was really looking at flash sales and limited inventory sales. And these really trail off by age. So um, as your consumer gets older, so if you have an older um, audience that you're, you're, you're uh, messaging to, then these groups may be less interested in some of these higher pressure sales. Uh, but overall, it seemed to be um, one of the, the less exciting ways to go. So what you should do with this data is you probably have picked one of these as one of your holiday promotions. So if that doesn't end up working out for you and you need to shift what that sale is going to be, here's some data to help guide you in that. So you're making a bit of an informed decision and you're not just guessing and in a panic about, well, what do we do now? Our free gift of purchase promo isn't working with our, our shoppers. Sales are down. Here's some data for you to go back to and really figure out what your next move is going to be. So we just looked at more of the themed kind of promotion. And now I want to look at the actual sale. So what are these discounts that are going to, to really be effective for holiday shoppers? So percentage discounts uh, was the most loved uh, with, with holiday shoppers going down to BOGO. Um, and then if we look at retailers, what was interesting here is that they're pretty much in line. Like the trend pretty much follows as far as um, what, what's going to be used and what's going to make shoppers want to buy. Now, if you're looking at this free gift with purchase in BOGO, you're probably thinking those are very expensive promotions to do. Well, you don't have to do it for everyone. So if you're looking at maybe um, you know, with 52% interest and 38% um, using from retailers, that's a pretty big gap um, when we look at this. So if you're looking at ways to maybe do this, maybe look at your repeat customers, so some of those who are most loyal or who buy frequently during the holiday season, or look at those prospects, so those people who are non-purchasers who you want to convert into a first-time purchaser, and then you can really message them throughout the rest of the year and capture more dollars. So don't think of these as a wide-casted net of what you need to do, but take some of these in tandem with some of the timing data that we saw earlier. Maybe figure out a way to message your female millennials during one of the big days with one of these awesome promotions. All right, so I um, wanted to dig a little bit deeper on some of these promos. So this is divided up. This is a, a new uh, dimension of the data for you to look at. So this is showing you online-only retailers versus those who sell online and in-store. And there are a few differences worth noting. And that was with clearance sales, where online-only retailers really plan to use those a lot more than those who um, sell on multiple channels. And free gift with purchase is more popular with those who are selling in both channels. So what does this mean for you? This really means if you are online-only, 
Understand what your competition is doing. Understand how some of those variables with your multi-channel competitors are going to come into play. This is what your shopper is going to see. They're going to see these options and you're going to need to compete with the awesome clearance sale against your online only competitor or that free gift with purchase from that multi-channel retailer. So this gives you some insight on how you should be able to adapt and react when those promos hit and your promo isn't really, um, isn't really sizing up. Um, so this data point, this is a bit of a pat on the back for all of you retailers out there. 91% um, of those retailers with stores are planning to offer in-store pickup, which is great. I mean, that's almost total saturation for uh, retailers with store locations. But only 55%, so just about half of holiday shoppers plan on using it. So this to me doesn't really say that it's not that effective. I think part of it is just some education and awareness about the process because like we'll see with mobile, not every retailer does this the same way. Um, there can be different wait times, different things to print out, different processes. Sometimes there may be a fee. Is there curbside pickup? Do I have to go in the store? There are a lot of questions that may need to be answered. So this is really an opportunity for you to promote this service um, as a value proposition. And I'll, I'm going to show you a couple other ways where you're, you're going to need to incorporate some of those value propositions in, in a minute. Um, but this could be a great way for you to start educating those shoppers, especially first-time buyers and those who are new to your brand, about the service that you offer and how easy it is to use. All right, so here's my scary doom and gloom slide for you. Um, do you want to lose 38% of your holiday shoppers? Um, my guess is everyone's saying no and probably rolling their eyes a little bit. But I want this to really stand out for you. So with this question, we're looking at free shipping, you know, the, the, the big thing that you can't escape during the holidays. So when we asked holiday shoppers about their, their feelings on free shipping, 38% of them said they will shop somewhere else if the retailer does not offer free shipping. That's huge. I mean, I think we all know that on some level. I think we're all aware of that. But that's a pretty big percentage of folks who are making a purchase decision based off of a free shipping option. Um, there's still some who will consider it 46%, 16% who are neutral. So there's still a lot of shoppers out there who are you know, a little bit in that gray area. But that 38% is definitely something you know, to pay attention to. And when we look at the retailer side of this, of how are you planning to offer free shipping, 28% are planning to offer it any time with any purchase. So that 28% is really capturing that 38%. They've got, they've got it covered. This next group, they're offering free shipping in some kind of combination. So order values or certain times um, as a limited time promotion. So there is a mix, and my guess is a lot of you probably fall into that mix in some way. So if you, if you can't offer free shipping, all hope isn't lost. What you really should do is to look at other ways to communicate that value proposition. Be really open about your shipping limitations. Don't hide it. Don't, don't let it be a surprise when somebody starts adding something to their cart. And then if they do add it to the cart and they see that, have a really compelling abandonment strategy. So maybe shift your cart reminder a little bit away from just the reminder about the cart to let them know about other value propositions and why they should be shopping with you during the holiday season. So it's a great excuse to crack open those cart reminder emails, to really think about this group. And if you aren't able to offer free shipping or perhaps during those times where you aren't offering free shipping, um, giving shoppers another way to feel warm and fuzzy and confident that they're getting the best deal with you. All right, so when we look at this too, free shipping, I wanted to dig in this a little bit more. So looking at online only retailers versus those multi-channel, this is really where we see the gap. So 30% of those um, online and store plan to offer free shipping anytime uh, for with any purchase compared to only 18% of those who are selling online only. So heads up to you online only retailers, that's what you're competing against. All right, so now let's look at some mobile data. Um, and just a reminder, if you have any questions while we're going through this, throw them in. We're going to have time at the end to, to get to them. Um, so this first question, we wanted to ask, ask shoppers about their planned purchases on mobile devices. Now, before I show you this data, I wanted to throw in a couple thoughts, that well, a few opinions I have about the results here. So we look at tablets and smartphones. And I think there's a bit of a gap here between what consumers plan to do versus what they're actually going to do. So if we look at some of the data uh, from mobile sales last year from like NRF and Comscore, everything jumped up so high. I mean, if you look at the percentage of sales on mobile devices for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, they were just huge. And, and I'm guessing we're probably going to break records again this year. So I think there's a little bit of a difference between the consumers planned, planned to use them 
and what they're actually going to do. So what we see here is 19% plan to purchase on a tablet and 22% plan to smart, uh, purchase on a smartphone. So we're seeing a little bit more activity of completing an order on a smartphone, which may indicate that tablets are being used a little bit more for research before that purchase is actually made or that smartphone is actually getting carried in the store to assist with that purchase in the store location. So what this means to me is it, it it's not an excuse to stop your, your mobile optimization efforts. To me, this is really a call for you to explain to your shoppers how to complete orders on their mobile devices, to let them know whether or not they can do it, how easy it is to do, and for you to make that process as frictionless as possible. So what kind of information are you able to pull in to make checkout have fewer taps? So they're entering uh, less information to include additional payment options that may integrate with tools on their, on their phone or PayPal or those kinds of things. So um, this number, I think it's just, it really points to one of the, the ways that retailers are really helping consumers get their legs in shopping on mobile devices and really cro crossing those channels between sites and stores. Um, so I thought this is very interesting. And hopefully this is a stat that we'll repeat again next year and we'll see these expectations go up. And my guess is one year these will just completely flip over to the other side once consumers really get that confidence that they're able to buy from the mobile devices just as easily as their laptops are in a store. Okay, um, so this is going to be one of my last slides here, and it has a lot of data. And this is something, if you download that report, you can really sift through it. But we wanted to ask consumers, how do you plan to use your smartphone versus how do, how do retailers expect their shoppers to use their smartphones? Now, you've probably invested quite a bit in optimizing either your app or your mobile site, or perhaps adding some interactive elements to your store, location-based services, all those fun things. So you probably have an idea of where you've spent your money, but what are shoppers actually going to do? So um, the top thing here is to search for coupons and promo codes, which I did not find to be that surprising. Um, and it goes down quite a bit. I'm going to skip through this because I, I distill this down for you a little bit. But what you can see here, if you even just squint at it, is there's, there are a lot of gaps going on between what retailers expect and what consumers plan to do. So I'm about to make this chart even uglier, but um, I'm going to guide you through it. So if you look at those top two, the ones that are surrounded in that orange gold color, this is where consumers are planning to do something a lot more than retailers are expecting them to do it. So highlighting some of those gaps. So 61% of holiday shoppers plan to find a lower price at another store or site. So more than half of shoppers are going to look at your competitor on their smartphone. And only 41% of retailers think that that's going to happen. So I think there, that's something we need to admit to ourselves is happening a little bit and to figure out how we can combat that. And then taking pictures of products in the store. Um, so this can actually speak to increasing the number of products that are available on the product pages, especially when they're being viewed on a smartphone, to look at how, um, how those galleries actually function on a smaller screen. Now, the bottom three that I'm showing you, this is where retailers expect their shoppers to do it, but holiday shoppers aren't really planning to. And that's reading ratings and reviews, locating items in the store, and reading, this one really surprised me. 61% of retailers expected their shoppers to read return exchange policies. Now, it's very important, and it's definitely more important during the holidays than other times of the year because people are gifting. But if you're spending a lot of time and effort and money into making sure your return exchange policy is mobile friendly, there may be a couple of other ways to spend your time. Um, now, as far as reading ratings and reviews, I completely think that ratings and reviews are a vital part of the shopping process. So this to me does not say exclude them. This means to me really make them mobile friendly and have them be part of the process, but only part of the process. Really figure out what their role is and maybe there are certain product categories or price points where they influence the decision more than others, but they're also very content heavy. There's a lot of copy, a lot of star ratings and numbers going on, and that can be difficult to digest on a smaller screen. So maybe look at how you're presenting that information and see if it's putting up barriers or if it's really helping them along towards submitting that order. All right, so I'm going to wrap up before I turn it over to the Ad Shoppers guys. Um, so first of all, timing is everything. It, expect those shifts throughout the season. You're really going to be amplifying your message. You're going to be sending a lot more email. Figure out who to target, who to exclude, when to include folks make some really calculated decisions rather than just saturating your list. It's going to help with your deliverability and it's really going to help you to focus in on who, um, who is ready to buy and what they're ready to buy. Um, adjust your promotions thoughtfully, not in a panic. 
I, I can say from experience, I've, I've had a lot of last minute midnight rush decisions on how to shift promos around to really save some sales over an underperforming weekend. Use some of this data to help guide those decisions rather than just going with your gut. Um, you may have a good gut, but always think that data is, is something worth factoring in there. And then look at some of the, the data that I shared with you today to figure out are there certain products and promotions that may fit better with certain demographics during those key periods of time. Um, and with mobile, it, I think that there's still a lot of room for awareness and ed education. Make sure, especially now while we're early in the season, that you're, you're building some awareness and you're letting folks know how to use some of these services or how to navigate through your mobile website or how to actually purchase on your mobile website. And focus on those features that shoppers want to see. Look at that data. Make sure you've checked off some of those top things that shoppers are really expecting to do and to make sure you're ready for it and make sure you're not spending too much time on those things that they're not really planning to use. All right, so um, if you want to download some of the data that I shared today, or if you're still planning, or just want a few other ideas, you can visit our Holiday Resource Center at bronto.com slash holidays. Lots of good stuff there. There are a few um, little downloadable workbooks even to help you out. Um, so feel free to take a look at that. And thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to some of your questions in a few minutes. Thanks, Jim. So everybody, that was some really awesome holiday data that we um, just looked at. Um, so I'm going to maybe take a couple seconds or maybe just talk slowly to let that data kind of marinate and sink in. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in Chad now, um, and he's going to run over his presentation. So go ahead and take it away, Chad. Great. Hey, everybody, this is Chad Ledford. Again, if you have any questions or if you want to use the chat box, feel free to do that over on the right-hand side in the GoToWebinar. So today, a couple of things that I'm going to be going over. First, we're going to go through some social commerce stats or stats that we've seen across our network of retailers. Then we're going to take a look at some unique campaign strategies or tactics that retailers are using in the fourth quarter that you may or may not have seen before. And then the last piece is to take a look at some of the important dates that you should be aware of for the fourth quarter. So just to give you an idea of some of this data that we're about to look at, um, our technology and our sharing buttons are used on a little over 10,000 retailers' websites. And from the data, we've tracked over 90 million in revenue across 100 million products and SKUs. So we have a pretty large data pool where all this is going to be extracted from. And Internet Retailer and Business Insider and a couple other publications use our data. Um, so if you want to see any of that data, you can just go to adshoppers.com backslash stats to dive into it a little more for your vertical. But we're going to hit on to that a little more of a high level here. <clears throat> so one of the first things that we found in looking at the data was that a socially engaged user spends 8% more than a non-socially engaged user. So what that means is, Customers who are sharing your products, customers who are coming from shared links or things that you post on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and things like that, they're coming to the site and they're spending more. Uh, across our network, the average order value for someone who came from a social network was $126 compared to someone who came from other marketing channels at $116. So based off that, we can start to see things like what's the average value per tweet or the average value per Facebook share or per pen. And we're going to dive into these networks a little more individually now. So whenever we tell clients and retailers to think about Pinterest, we encourage them to think of it more like uh, a search engine than a social network. So it really is starting to become the new Google shopping. Um, and it's all about getting distribution and ranking for certain things whenever people go to Pinterest to search for them. So this year was the first year, and um, we started tracking Pinterest about three years ago, so we've kind of seen the rise of Pinterest and how it compares to other networks. <clears throat> but this year was the first year that Pinterest has eclipsed Facebook in total sharing volume, uh, and it, it did it in a big way. It's a little over 250% of sharing is coming from Pinterest compared to Facebook. And some of the top categories that are leading the way here include home and garden, apparel and clothing, and health and beauty. On home and garden, the average conversion rates were 180% higher in the third and fourth quarter of last year. 
So we expect that trend to continue through this year. And the average order value was almost 10% higher in the apparel and clothing category. And in whole, uh, health and beauty, the conversion rates were almost 300% higher dur during the fourth quarter. So as you're thinking about your Q4 strategies, you definitely want to be aware that conversion rates for social networks do increase. Average order values do increase during the fourth quarter. So Facebook. Um, we encourage clients to think of Facebook as a distribution platform similar to email. <clears throat> uh, whenever someone likes your page, it's almost the equivalent of them giving you their email address because you have the chance to market to them again. Uh, it's not free anymore. You have to do boosted posts and promoted, um, promoted posts and things like that but it is a chance to get in front of those customers who've shown an interest in your brand in the past. So Facebook represents close to 30% of all the social revenue that we've tracked in our system. So compared to all the other net networks, Facebook is still the largest. Um, and whenever you break that down a little more, we found that a Facebook share converts almost 500% higher than a Facebook like. So whenever someone likes your product, and a lot of retailers, you probably have a like button on your product detail pages and things like that. But to really get the benefit of a share, um, you want to replace that with the Facebook share button and get those people promoting it in their timelines so that you show in their friends' timelines as well. And we also found that Facebook traffic converts 150% higher during the fourth quarter. Um, so again, a couple of categories that are noteworthy here are going to be collectibles, novelty, and entertainment and media. Inside the collectibles category, we found that social sales increased 30% from the third to fourth quarter. The average order value was 44% higher for novelty products, and the conversion rates were almost 200% higher in the media and entertainment category. So Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest is a really great way to drive real-time awareness and if you have limited time promotions it's a really great way to get in front of uh, uh, people who love seeing things in real time <clears throat> so across our network we found that 35 percent of all the traffic and all the clicks came from pinterest so uh, a lot of people characterize the, the pinterest audience as add they like to just click around and um, go from one thing to the next and like to be really involved in real-time things, so it's really important to build up a sense of urgency around this group. Uh, a couple categories that we found here that were noteworthy are going to be holiday, sports and outdoors, and then vice industries. So referral traffic to um, customers inside the holiday category grew 150%, like you might expect, during the fourth quarter of last year. The average order values were 11% higher for sports and outdoor retailers, and the referral traffic from Twitter was 140% higher for vice industries. So email sharing. Um, this one gets neglected a lot, but it's a really powerful way to get your brand promoted in that one-to-one -one messaging environment. So if you can get one friend to email another friend and let them know about your brand, your products, your sales, your promotions. It's one of the highest converting traffic sources that there is. Across our network, we see it converting at almost 10%. So if I were to email you a product or a promotion, odds of you converting are much higher than any other network. And a share from an email on average was worth over $12. So by comparison, we looked at Facebook and that was less than a dollar and a Facebook or a, an email share is worth over $12 on average. So a couple categories to note here. Inside of the travel category, we saw the average order values were 78% higher during the fourth quarter. Inside of the holiday category, the percentage of shares was almost 250% higher during the fourth quarter. And then the social sales were 30% higher during the fourth quarter for office supply companies. So now we have a lot of great data. We know that different segments of customers want to be treated differently, and there's social networks out there that are driving traffic back to the store. So the real question is, um, what do the holiday shoppers want, and what are some unique campaigns or strategies that we can utilize to get those customers converted? So from what Jim discussed, we know that 71% of consumers want discounts. 
So a lot of retailers struggle with how to give discounts or how to give discounts profitably. And here's a couple of strategies that are a little bit outside of the box. One of the more popular ones is offering a discount in exchange for someone's email. Um, you see a lot of retailers utilizing that strategy. It's usually done through a pop-up or a modal whenever someone first comes to the site. <clears throat> Another strategy that you can do is offer customers a promotion in exchange for sharing out on social media. So for example, share out your shopping cart to get 10% off your next purchase. You're still able to capture their email address, but at the same time, you're going to show up in their news feed so that their friends know about the product that they're looking at or brands that they're showing an interest in. And a couple, um, uh, another really popular way to do this is through a referral marketing strategy. So setting up something like a refer a friend campaign where friends can give 10% or get 10% once their friend completes a purchase from the store. Uh, we also know that 38% of shoppers abandon if they don't have some sort of free shipping. So what that means is 62% of customers may or may not be okay with um, paying for some sort of shipping. So one strategy you can do here is segment out those customers and show a promotion to them if they're close to a free shipping offer. Or if you only want to show free shipping to customers who place an order over $50 and they're really close, then you can show a pop-up modal or some sort of trigger a banner on the site to let them know how close they are to that next free shipping offer. And on mobile, we found that a really good way to do this is allowing customers to use something like sign in with Facebook or sign in with Google to create their account. And then once they create their account, automatically applying a free shipping promotion. So this is going to help increase the, the conversion rate on mobile device because it's less fields that the customer has to complete. So Pinterest did a survey and found that 47% of shoppers say that Pinterest has inspired a gift purchase. <clears throat> so the strategy here is to see Pinterest with your products now. So whenever customers come back, getting a little feedback. Um, yeah, so the, the strategy here is to see Pinterest with your products. Give us one. Sorry about that. I think we're getting a little, a little feedback on our. Hey guys, sorry about that. Um, I think we're having some technical difficulties for a second. But um, to go back to this slide here, so Pinterest did a survey and found that 47% of shoppers say that Pinterest inspired a gift purchase. So the idea here is to be sure that all your products are on Pinterest. So whenever someone goes there to look for a product or to look for ideas and to build out their holiday list, <clears throat> your products are available for them to discover. And one tactic that we found to really boost engagement here and to, to really get your customers sharing out your products and pinning out your products for you is to offer what we call a pin it to win it contest. So customers enter the contest, they give you their email address, and then after they've entered each product that they pin out counts as an additional entry into the giveaway. So this is a really great way to get customers pinning out your products Pinterest is going to see more activity coming from your site. So over time, you're going to rank higher whenever customers go to Pinterest to look for things. Um, we also know that customers want you to help them figure out when they need to place orders. Um, so using those shipping deadlines to create a sense of urgency is another great strategy to help get customers over the hump of, do I want to order this now or do I want to wait? So 
the ability to advertise your shipping deadlines across the site, whether it's through some sort of top bar or banner or on your cart page. Uh, you want to make sure that they're really aware and using some sort of countdown timer uh, from some of the A-B tests that we've run really helps increase your conversion rates because it creates that sense of urgency for that group of buyers who really wants to make sure that they get it on time. And then we also know that customers want a personalized shopping experience. They want to feel special and they want to know that you know enough about them to recommend and show things that make sense for them. So for example, from what Jim went through, we know that women start shopping earlier and men wait till the last minute. And we also know that 22% of millennials start shopping on Black Friday and seniors like to start earlier. So being able to segment out your email lists and the offers and what you're showing on the site makes sense because now you can target that group of customers and show them promotions and offers based off of what you already know about them. Um, so again, you can do this inside of email, you can do it on the site, in your retargeting ads and throughout your marketing, um, but just the ability to segment based off what you know about those customers. And shoppers also want a reason to come back after the holidays. So one strategy that we found here um, is after a customer has completed a purchase, give them the option to share out their purchase in exchange for a gift certificate or a promotion that they can use after the holiday season is over. So if you've ever gone to Old Navy or some of the um, apparel stores, they say if you spend over a certain amount, you get $20 back during a certain window of time. Using that type of promotion and making it available online is going to help boost your sales after the holiday promotions are over. So lastly, we're going to go through a couple important dates that you should be aware of. And again, this presentation is going to get emailed out to everyone, so you'll have this in your inbox if you want to share it with your team or anyone like that. Um, <clears throat> but a couple um, days that you should consider that are a little less known, but they still add value, is going to be Singles Day which is going to be November 11th. Uh, then we also have Monday the 14th is going to be Green Monday, which is the largest online shopping day of the year. Uh, a lot of people think that it's Black Friday or something along those lines, but Green Monday is typically the last day to get free shipping. So it's a really good chance to promote any of those free shipping offers that you have. And then December 26th is going to be Boxing Day or the day after the Christmas rush. So a couple of shipping deadlines that you should be aware of, depending on um, who you use to ship. If you're using USPS, Monday the 14th is going to be the last day for free standard shipping, depending on where you're shipping to. Uh, and then if you're using FedEx or UPS, it's going to be the 18th, and that's going to be that green Monday. Cool. Uh, thanks, Chad. So this is Peter again. Um, we wanted to go ahead and, and answer some questions that came in. Um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and send them in, and we can um, kind of fill up our queue here as we're going through them. Um, but so the first question I wanted to uh, to, to bring up and, and pose to both um, Chad and, um, and and Jim, if he wants to answer, um, is it's about Black Friday and Amazon. So the question is, what's the impact of Black Friday specials by Amazon and Walmart um, in, in July on the holiday consumer? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and let Jim answer this one first. So that's that's a, a pretty loaded question. I, I think you first have to look at the concept of Black Friday um, and how it started. And it really was that day after Thanksgiving and more of a 24-hour period and um, was really a, a very concentrated time to save a lot of money on really high price point items. And I think that that concept has carried over throughout the year um, and, and along with it has taken the name Black Friday. So if you look at certain industries, especially like home repair companies, they have Black Friday sales every month. A lot of um, computer gadget and gizmo, uh, build your own computer kind of companies do that as well. So when you look at the big players like Amazon and Walmart, they really do take that concept and, and try to market it earlier. So it, I think it dilutes the impact of Black Friday in itself. Um, and I honestly have seen strong performance, but not super strong performance. I think it's going to steal any thunder from the actual day. 
when we look at the data of when folks are going to start uh, their shopping, we do see Black Friday as that first really big spike, especially for millennials. So yes, their dollars being spent under the umbrella of Black Friday, but when we look at the actual event itself, I don't see much being taken away from it. What I think has been interesting in the past year, especially with Amazon, when they had their big Prime Day, was trying to take that concept and create something new or different or to really push the boundaries of what a one-day event could be, and maybe getting back to that 24-hour sale a little bit more. And I'm sure you read the headlines about that particular day. So as you start your Black Friday planning, I think you can look at the types of promotions that those guys sent out and what did they look like, um, what did their sites look like, what kind of products were they offering, what kind of sales did they run, how deep were the discounts, what product categories did they focus on, and you can take a lot of that and learn from it. But I don't think it should really take away from anything that you have planned out. And Chad, I'm sure you have something to add to that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, Black Friday is definitely, whenever you think Black Friday, you always think the larger brands like the Amazon, the Walmarts, the Best Buys of the world. And really their whole goal is to use that to get people <clears throat> in store for an online retailer um, at I know whenever we were an online retailer, Black Friday wasn't as big of a day for us as some of the other days. Um, so I, I think you're right that Black Friday is going to be centered more towards those larger retailers um, who are really using it to sort of kickstart people and get people to the site. Um, but for us, I, I know that using the shipping deadlines and things like that perform better for us. Um, so the, the impact for smaller retailers isn't going to be as substantial as it is for some of the larger big box retailers. And just one thing to add on to that too, Chad, is it, when I look at the data from last year, Black Friday really started at the beginning of November, a little bit in the late, in late October, but it was really a month-long promotion for a lot of retailers. So if you are planning, and, and that was, we did see Thanksgiving fall later in November, so Cyber Monday was getting pushed into December, and we have an extra day or two baked in this year. So it probably won't be as spread out, but a lot of shoppers have gotten used to shopping Black Friday sales right after Halloween is over. So keep that in mind, too, um, that there may be a lot out in market that you're competing with that's Black Friday way before Black Friday even gets here. So we have another question kind of um, in, the, in the same area, but on the, the other side. Um, so the question's around... Um, how long do you think promotions from Black Friday or Cyber Monday should be extended, um, if at all? Um, what was the first part of that? How long should they be extended? Yeah, how long should, the, should those Black Friday or Cyber Monday promos be extended? So what I've seen in the data, um, like I just mentioned, that Black Friday really became that month-long promotion. So it, its start date isn't really... There's no starting gun for Black Friday, um, but it does start to run out um, around Sunday morning. We saw a lot of that Black Friday traffic and messaging going down. And on that Sunday after Black Friday, we start to see the rise of Cyber Monday. Um, and then as Cyber Monday progresses, it really becomes more that Cyber Week. Now, a couple years ago, Cyber Week was um, very heavily used. Last year, it went down a little bit, and that may have been um, as a result of that there being that shorter season after Cyber Monday, so less room to work with and more time to focus on those shipping deadlines and expirations. So when we look at where do we extend them, you also have to think of where do you start them. So anticipate Black Friday promotions starting in early November and running for the full month and Black Friday being extended through that Sunday. And then Cyber Monday, a little bit of start on um, the Saturday after Black Friday and then going through that following week. And you'll see folks extend it all the way through probably until Christmas Day. I'm always surprised how far I see them. Um, the other variable to throw in there too are Thanksgiving promotions because a lot of folks have started to do that and they've seen a lot of success with them. And those tend to be centered around the Monday through the Thursday of Thanksgiving. Very few retailers, but there were some, actually use Thanksgiving as a their, their primary promotion throughout the whole weekend. So, you know, keep that in mind too, that there are going, there are going to be a lot of different promotions hitting the inbox and on different sites and in stores. So just make sure your message is consistent and clear and it's not confusing. But extending it should really be a calculated move on your part. So, um, so it makes sense for your customer and that you're really giving them a good narrative of how to shop your site and you're building some of that anticipation on the front end and you're really increasing that urgency on the back end. 
Yeah, and I think just to play devil's advocate on that a little bit <clears throat> is that you probably, I, I know for us we never extended the sales because any time that customers get used to that, um, then they, they tend not to take the sales as seriously, especially if you're using things like countdown timers or, or other things like that. So I think there's enough random holidays now like uh, Singles Day or um, Cyber Monday and Green Monday and um, all these different holidays that keep popping up that you can basically build enough anticipation beforehand to really launch a 24-hour or 48-hour sale. Um, but it's really more of a, a branding question, like how, how do you guys want people to perceive the brand? Do you want to do it before and after, or do you want people to know like once it's over, it's officially over? Um, but there, there's arguments both ways. So, All right, so we're going to take a couple more. Um, trying to get out of here by three, so we've got about eight minutes for more questions. Um, if you have any more, go ahead and, and send them in now um, so that we have a chance to answer them live here. Um, so one that just came in. Um, so this this question's mainly around, um, and I think this could almost be a, a broader question, but it's around um, will holiday discounts damage the brand name? Um, so that's the main question here. Um, let me let me start off with Jim. Um, what are your thoughts on discounts and um, and brand image? Please. Well, I think you always have to consider your brand standards when launching any promotion. So, um, you know, you, you don't want to alienate your customers by offering a 60% discount year-round on new products and then not offering anything during the holidays. So I think there's something to be said for being consistent. Um, you know, during the holidays, this is where, where shoppers want a good deal and not offering it could equally, I, mean, I could argue the point that that could equally damage your brand. Um, if anything, it could damage your bottom line, which can do a lot of damage. Um, so you need, to, you need to be careful, you need to be competitive, you need to be consistent, um, but you also need to expect that if you're not offering a deal, people are gonna find a way to save some money. Um, so, you know, the holidays are also a time where you can be a little bit clever you can, if you have a softer side to your brand, you can be a little bit playful. Um, it's a time where consumers are getting inundated with ways to save and a lot of marketing messages. So introducing some levity in and some, some personality can maybe soften some of the, the blows that go along with um, some of that increased marketing. But if you really just use your best judgment and some best practices, and you don't do anything that you know is going to be extremely high risk, there shouldn't be any brand damage from offering discounts. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. Uh, a couple strategies are anyone who can't discount. There, there's basically two things that we usually recommend. One would be to have some sort of an, an offer, like a, a giveaway or something along those lines, like submit a picture of yourself wearing a shirt for a chance to win, or give us your email address for a chance to win and things like that so you're not discounting but you still have some sort of incentive for the customer. Um, and then the other one is going to be bundling some products together. So offering something free if they order on Black Friday or some additional add-on to whatever their cart is. Uh, those are both really good strategies to still create that sense of urgency and provide additional value without offering a discount or a percentage off. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if you can't, if you're restricted by your manufacturers or if it's just not something your brand does, just think of any other value proposition that you have. Do you have a fashionista who can give advice? Do you have gift wrapping services? Do you have extended store hours? There are lots of different ways that people can feel like they're, if you can't offer a good deal, you can make it easy for them. You can introduce a level of convenience and service that can make you competitive. Cool. So we're going to take just take one or two more here. Um, so the next one up is um, when or kind of how often should I do a pulse check on the, the performance of my holiday campaigns? So I think you should be doing it throughout the season. Um, it's when it comes to these big days like Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I, I have definitely worked with clients who do them hourly just to see how sales are trending. 
and that's not really a bad idea because that, those are going to be some of your biggest days of, of the year. Um, what's really important though, especially now when things haven't gotten really crazy, you need to establish benchmarks for the rest of the season to understand when your traffic dipped and when, when it spikes to really get those benchmarks to understand your performance better. So if you're having a slow day in sales and a slow day in site traffic, it may be expected. There may be other factors going on outside of just whatever it is that you're promoting at that period of time. So um, one of the things I recommend too now is just doing some fire drills. Start looking at the campaigns that you sent out last weekend. Understand what kind of dashboards you need to view to really get the insights that you need to make decisions about whether to extend a sale or whether to switch a sale completely. Um, it's really going to help you to, to navigate the holidays, but if you're looking for some structure on the slower parts of the holidays, at least an end of day report I think is a good idea. A little bit conservative on that side. You could do weekly if you wanted to. And when it comes to these major days, really amp that up. At least a midday check-in and an evening check-in. Awesome, thanks. Um, one more really quick question for, for you, Jim. Um, there was a question about how to download that report you mentioned. Um, yes. Where, where should they go to find that? So if you want to download the report that had the data presented, you can go to bronto.com slash holiday report. That's all one word. If you want to go to our Holiday Resource Center, which has that report and some additional items, it's bronto.com slash holidays. Um, so both of them are available to you there. And I think you'll receive the report too as a follow-up after the webinar. Awesome. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, so just everybody here, um, you'll receive that as a follow-up. And um, we'll also send out the recording um, as soon as we have that up and running. So um, with that, um, that, that concludes all the questions. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. And have a great day and have a great holiday season.